Hey, this is Russ. How did I mess my knee up? <laughs> some of you might know, some of you might not. So I figured today I'm going to tell you how I messed up my knees. Now, you might wonder, is this something that just recently happened? Was it something that has been going on for a while? Well, um, yeah, it was going on for a while. Back in high school days, I'm going to say sophomore year, high school, I started taking Taekwondo, which you know is martial arts, right? And so uh, there was a, a friend of my brother's who had started taking Taekwondo lessons. And uh, I thought it was interesting to be able to do that. And of course, that was the time when all the, the movies came out, the Bruce Lee movies and all that kind of stuff, right? So I said, yeah, I, I, I would like to learn that. So I, I took some Taekwondo lessons, okay? Little did I know that I would do this way into my 30s. <laughs> now, I, I was never very athletic. I, I was terrible at sports. I was always the last guy picked. Um, couldn't do anything really in sports. I was, I was awful, <laughs> really. And uh, I was always a little overweight, although I wasn't that overweight in high school, but I was still bigger than probably most of the guys, but I wouldn't say I'm as, I was as big as I am now. And I, and I attribute all that weight gain to the bad knees, by the way. So anyways, um, I took up Taekwondo and it, uh, it messed up my knees. And there's a lot of kicking involved in martial arts. And I always make the joke that, you know, people tell you you should take martial arts. One day you may have to defend yourself, right? I can't even run away from people now. <laughs> It's true, I can't. Um, so, uh, what is Taekwondo? It's 70% it's kicks, 30% hands. So, there's the key right there. If it's 70% kicks, you know there's something up there, right? Yeah. And uh, was I good at it? Well, let's put it this way. People always figure if, you, if you've been doing it since sophomore year, you kept going until um, in your 30s, you must be several degrees black belt. <laughs> you know, maybe I would have been by now, right? But no, I am the world's oldest green belt. <laughs> what is a green belt in Taekwondo? If you do traditional uh, Taekwondo ranking system, it's, it's white, uh, yellow, green, blue, uh, red, and black. Okay, that's that's how our school was. Now there's other schools that add add belts in between, and they add stripes in between. Okay, so it might be something like um, white, yellow, purple, and I think that could even be interchangeable. White, yellow, purple, and then green, and then blue, and then red, then brown, and brown and red could be interchangeable, and then black. All right. Now, you could be on other martial arts um, uh, ranking systems for Taekwondo. It could be white, yellow, um, one stripe, two stripes yellow, <laughs> green, one or two, three stripes green, uh, blue, one or two or three stripes blue. So why do they add these stripes? Okay, here's my reasoning behind it. Now, I'm sure those in martial arts will, will say, no, that's not right. Here, here's the real reason, in my opinion. It's because every time you go up for testing, all right, you got to pay for that testing. All right? and, and then you, and you go for a test, and then if you're good, they give you a stripe. Now, if, if they jump you from one belt to the other, and remember my traditional Taekwondo school was white, yellow, green, blue, red, and black. Not a whole lot of belts, okay? <laughs> but if you throw a couple stripes in between, and you got to pay for those testing, you see my point already? it gets the school some additional money because you gotta pay for, for testing for every stripe to move up. And if you add a couple more colors in between there too, yeah, you gotta pay for all that too. So it becomes a money-making machine, all right? And I always kind of felt that, um, no, I, I'm not doing that. I'm not paying for this. I just wanna learn how to do it. So by the time I had gotten up to my green belt, I just said, you know what, forget it. I'm not going up for any more belts. Now, the school can't force you to go up for a belt thing, and they can't just give you the belt. Even if you're good at it, they just can't give it to you. You have to go up for a, for a test. 
So uh, I had gotten to a certain level and they said, Russ, you, you need to test for your next belt. Yeah, okay. And then I would never do it. <laughs> Because I went there for the exercise and for learning how to, to do uh, martial arts. I, I wasn't really that into the belts because I just felt like it's just a way for them to make money. And what really, what difference does it make whether you call me a black belt or I'm the world's oldest green belt, okay? If my level of skill is black belt level or several degrees black belt level, what, what does it matter to you whether I'm a green belt or a black belt if my, if my skill level is, is that high anyways, okay? So I never did it. And I didn't go to school that entire time. I, I did uh, martial arts training for, I think, nine months to a year when I was in high school because I was paying for it myself. You know, I'd, I'd have an allowance. My parents would give me an allowance, and I'd take that money to pay for the, for the training, okay? And eventually, I ended up uh, quitting. But that didn't mean that I quit doing martial arts because I continued training on my own because again remember I'm not into the belt thing anyway so I figured uh, I know the basics let me just keep training and I would I would keep working on my kicks and I would keep working on my my, my forms which they sometimes call patterns um, in in Japanese karate would be katas okay I kept working on that stuff on my own anyways by the time um, we had moved to California. I got married and moved to California, and we're talking years down the road now. Um, I said to my wife, you know, I, I think I would like to go back to training, uh, formal training. And so I went to a school um, where near where we lived, and I didn't want to pay for it, <laughs> okay? So I said to the, uh, the owner, who was the black belt instructor there, I said, look, uh, is there anything I can do for you in exchange for me being able to come to the classes? So uh, he knew, uh, you know, from what I told, told him that, I, you know, I did photography and I did video work. He says, hey, you know, if you can make some videos for us, uh, I will allow you to come and train at our school uh, in exchange for making videos. I says, hey, or take photos, you know, demonstrations, things like that. I says, yeah. I could do that, right? And I think at that time, I don't know what they charge nowadays for martial arts training, but I think he was charging about $60 a month. Now, when I went, when I was younger, it was like $25 a month, which is a lot of money back then, but I, I believe he charged $60 a month. And he had a lot of kids at this school, but he didn't have a lot of adults. And at this time, I would have been late 20s, I believe, something like that. Uh, late 20s to early 30s late 20s to maybe 30 something like that when I went back so he wanted some older um, students so he said well and, and I asked him I says you know do I need to start back at white belt level because you know I was, I was back at the beginning of training again he says well he says why don't you come to a class and let me evaluate your skill level said, okay <laughs> So I went to class and, um, and I told him I was a green belt, you know, way back when. So he, he evaluated me, he says, no, you can keep your, you can keep your green belt. <laughs> because I was fighting at black belt level, quite frankly. <laughs> so he, he, uh, he kind of liked having me around because he, he says, you know, just to have someone who can be a little bit older and show that they can still do things, uh, was a benefit to him. And so we did a number of uh, demonstrations and things too. We, we would go to schools because um, at that time, I think I was working for myself. I had left the district attorney's office and I was uh, running my own company in forensics. And uh, I had a lot of time, you know, if I wasn't working a case, um, I had time. So he would, he would go to do these demonstrations at, at uh, you know, elementary schools and stuff and I would go with him, and so we would do demonstrations. Uh, I recall, too, we once had a demonstration uh, outside of the school, and he was in a, a shopping center, so we would do a demonstration things, and we'd break boards and, you know, do some jumping kicks, things like that. So, uh, you know, I'd break like three boards, do, do a side kick, break three boards, do a roundhouse kick or a front kick, break three boards, you know, punch through, through three boards. And I remember uh, my, my parents came to visit us once and um, uh, they came to watch the demonstration. My dad went with me to another school. Um, I, I had done a video for another school as well. 
And uh, he was watching me do that stuff too. But I do recall my mom always saying, uh, you know, if you keep this stuff up, <laughs> you're gonna pay the price. Sure enough, mom is always right. And uh, that's what messed up my knees. So I had torn meniscuses. Uh, I always wondered why my, my legs always hurt and my knees always hurt. And so I went in and found out that I had torn meniscuses. So it was about 15 years ago, I guess now at this point be coming close to 16 years now, I guess, um, that I had my first torn meniscus taken care of and that was on my left leg, okay, my left knee. And that's the knee I have the uh, knee replacement on. And then um, five years later, um, I had the torn meniscus in my right knee taken care of too. So down the road, my right knee probably will need a replacement also, but um, it's still better than my left knee. <laughs> <laughs> and I think if I baby it, I can probably stretch this thing out for a little bit. So that's how I hurt my, my knee. It's just a little history on how uh, things came about. And if you ask me, you know, how, you know, what were you able to do in Taekwondo? Yeah, I could kick you in the head. <laughs> I could do spinning kicks and knock you down. <laughs> I remember hitting a, a Marine once, you know, where we lived, there was a bunch of uh, military out in that area. And uh, there was a Marine who had joined up and he, he was just a white belt and stuff, but he was a big guy. And, um, you know, we, we try to maintain control so we don't actually, you know, make contact. But I think he stepped into the kick. <laughs> so I did a, a spinning heel kick, if you know what that is. Uh, you, you turn and you spin and uh, your leg essentially wraps around and your heel hits the guy, right? So I did a spinning heel kick and caught him wear in the jaw, <laughs> knocked him flat on his face. <laughs> so I, I was really nervous about that. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, I, I, I did not expect that he was going to turn and move forward. Okay. And I don't think he was thinking he was going to do that either, but he walked right into the kick. <laughs> and of course, I remember all the students going, wow, that's such an impressive kick. But my, in my mind, I said, like, man, gee, I hope I didn't break this guy's jaw, <laughs> but he was okay. And then the next person I had to spar, um, was uh, uh, an older uh, lady who had taken classes. I think she was in her mid thirties. And she, she, she told me, she says, I'm afraid of you. <laughs> I told her, I said, no, I'm not going to kick you in the face. <laughs> Don't worry. Not after knocking the other guy down. Um, you know, I was gonna be a little bit more careful. <laughs> Anyways, just wanted to let you guys know, that's how my knees got messed up. And uh, can I still do these things? Um, I would say, if I had the strength in my in my knee again, um, if it could support my weight and, and things like that easily, if I could stand in one leg, um, my right knee, which is not done yet, yeah, I can probably still kick you in the face. <laughs> not, uh, not necessarily with the left knee <laughs> being messed up. I, I don't think I can use my left leg anymore. Um, and of course, you, you know, Taekwondo is not just all kicking, although 70% of it is. We still have 30% ability uh, in our in our hands. So um, yeah, can I still take care of myself? Yeah, I think I can. But I think uh, being um, handicapped to the point where you can't even run away and things like that, yeah, it might be a little difficult. <laughs> Anyways, if you liked the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the share button, hit all those buttons, and I will talk to you guys next time.